Now we've seen some amazing analysis already, but I wanna zoom out a bit and take a look holistically at what spatial analysis and data science really encompasses. Now each of these pieces are key components of doing great data science. But I think if we scaled them based on the amount of time that we take in each activity, it might look something a little bit more like this. Well, data engineering is arguably one of the most time consuming parts of the analysis process. It's where we get our data ready for analysis. We do things like fill missing values or add new fields that we'll use in future analysis. And this part of the process is absolutely crucial because our analysis is only ever as good as the data that we put into it. With the upcoming release of ArcGIS Pro 2.8, we're introducing a brand new experience for doing data engineering inside of ArcGIS. It'll make exploring and visualizing your data easier and brings together tools from all across ArcGIS to construct, clean, format, and integrate your data to get it ready for analysis. And it probably sounds impossible, but I think we actually managed to make data engineering a little fun. So to give us a tour of this new capability, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Lakeisha Coleman. Thank you, Lauren. Across the United States, many families are struggling to put food on their tables. Food insecurity, or the lack of access to food, has increasingly become an issue, especially this past year, and we'd like to explore the problem so that ultimately we can help inform policy decisions. In addition to relying on food banks, like those run by the Capital Area Food Bank who created this powerful story map, many families also rely on public benefits like the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, benefits. For this research, I've pulled together data on SNAP benefits, as well as demographic and unemployment data, which we tend to include in this type of analysis. But, like most data, this data is messy and not analysis ready. A common starting point is just cracking it open and looking at the table, which takes a lot of manual work to explore each field, to get a better sense of the data. The new data engineering experience makes this really easy. It brings together lots of capabilities in one place, helping you to move from the often tedious data engineering process and into your analysis quickly. You can see the different data types, visually explore the data, looking not just at the raw data, but mapping each variable with a single click to learn more about its spatial patterns, such as median household income or perhaps average household size, as more people in a household changes benefits received. I can also add these fields into my summary statistics view and start to learn a lot more about my data. I get a powerful overview of my data, such as histogram charts showing the variable's distribution, summary statistics such as mean, standard deviations, and outliers, as well as this column for the number of nulls or missing values. First, I want to see where those missing values are on my map. If they were all clustered together, for instance, this might indicate an issue with data collection. This is a great example of information that is critical to my data engineering and only possible when I think about the problem spatially. In this case, they look pretty random and I'm comfortable using the fill missing values tool so that these don't present an issue later in my analysis. With the simple right click, I bring up the tool and choose to fill in missing values using spatial neighbors, a really powerful way to take advantage of using spatial relationships, and I run my analysis. When I run this, those results can be found within the attribute table with those previously missing values now filled in. Back in the data engineering view, I remember seeing a skewed distribution for the participants that I'd like to deal with. With a right click, I choose transform field and I'll input the necessary information. This skewed distribution was expected as this is a count measurement and counts tend to be skewed. Once I run this back in the data engineering view, I'll recalculate and the results go from that skewed distribution to a more normal distribution, such as this, which is much better for the analysis. There's also this data engineering ribbon, which gets activated with the view. Within the ribbon, you'll find more data engineering tools to make your process as efficient as possible. Tools for clean, such as delete fields or find spatial outliers. Construct, if I need to calculate or add a field. Integrate for those analysis tools to do those fundamental GIS operations such as enrich. And format, I can convert a time field or encode a categorical variable. So many useful tools all within this ribbon. 
In this case, I'll go back to construct and I'm interested in performing dimension reduction, a common data science technique. I have a lot of population variables and here I'll use a principal component analysis to condense my data into a few components which I can use again in future modeling. These components will then be added to my data set so I can explore them further and use them in my analysis. And lastly, this past year has shown us the importance of being able to pull the latest data quickly, automate it, and also repeat the process. I can simplify this by creating a notebook where I can capture all the details of my process, why they are important, capture code, capture commands, and share with colleagues if needed. Now I'm ready to continue my work in researching food insecurity in the United States with the help of these great data engineering capabilities. Thank you.